In this video, we're going to review a portable solar power station that has enough stored power for everything you need, whether it's charging your e-bike on the go or heating up food while camping. We're going to test this power station beyond its limits and share our honest review of the Opus 1200 watt system. What is going on everyone? Today we have a portable power generator from Opus and we also have 200 watt solar panels that can power this, charge this, and then we can use this power to charge our electric bikes. We're gonna plug it into our Tesla. You can use this portable power generator for so many different appliances. You can use this for tool. This is great for camping. And I have had requests from electric bike and electric scooter owners like, can we take a portable power generator and charge it while going camping? So this is a great solution. Uh, this is the most affordable power generator that is out in the market. It beats out the competition in terms of a spec, but then it is priced appropriately so it becomes affordable for everyone. Let's get started with today's review. The package comes with everything you need to use the system. The solar panels come folded in a very protective packaging and have a pocket in the back that contains the split charging adapter and the DC output. The power station also comes in a very protective double packaging. It comes with the wall and the car charger, and of course the power station itself. Let's review this power station and the solar panels in great detail and explore some use cases. Before we talk about the performance, let's go over the spec and the main features. They say solar panels and the power station of varying sizes, and this particular unit is a 1200 watt sustained power station. This unit surges at around 3600 watt. The station has a 992 watt hour LiPo 4 battery. It features an ergonomic handle for portability, which is very common in the market for this type of stations. This Opus power station has a dimension of 13 inches by 8.7 inches by 11.4 inches and a weight of just 31 pounds. This also has a light in the back with varying power intensity and a SOS feature. Let's talk about the output of this power station. Right here on the left, you have got your AC output. This is 100 to 120 volt output, 1200 watt max. I have taken this all the way to 17, 1800 for a short period of time and it works. They say that it peaks around 3600 watt. So if you put multiple things on this and it significantly goes over that 1200 watt, the surge protector is gonna trigger and it's not going to work. But as long as you're under that 1200 watt, which is you know, a lot of power for your regular electronics and even tools, you are fine with these three different options. So it's amazing that it's not just one AC output, you got three different AC output on this station. Then the rest of the output on the other side. First of all, we have this 12 volt DC output. This is for the car cigarette lighter port and you can use this for a lot of different appliances and you can use this for air mattress. Uh, a lot of products come with this output. So this is really great for that purpose. It can do 12 volt. Then you have your DC output here you can get 12 volt, 10 amp from max from both of these output. So th those are also very applicable to a lot of different uh, appliances and a lot of different electronics. You can even charge smaller power stations using this output here. Then you have got your USB-C. These are high power, fast charging solution. You can use your phone. So you can charge your phone at a very fast rate using the PD 60 watt or the 18 watt. So there's this max 60 watt and this 18 watt. You can go anywhere 5 volt, 10 volt. You can go all the way to 20 volt. And I believe you can do 10 amp total from this. So you can get a lot of power, fast charging solution. You can charge your laptop using this USB-C ports. Then you got your USB-A here. These are quick charge 3.0 and they can charge your phone, they can charge the drone controller, the drone batteries, you can charge your camera gear, you can charge pretty much anything these days using the USB-A output here, and again, 18 watt max for this ports, dual ports, quick charge 3.0. Now let's go over the screen setting here. To turn this on, you just have to press and hold on this power button, and then the first thing that pops up here is the current battery percentage. So the percentage charge on this one is 85% right here. Then to turn on this AC socket, you just have to press this once and the AC socket turns on. Initially, the fan might kick in, so it'll show the AC here. Then to turn on this output here, you just have to press this one. Then you see the, the, 
the car as well as the DC outputs are turned on. So that is what you can typically see on this screen. There are other things that will pop up. Right here is your charge input in this blank space right here. There is an error bar that will show up right here when the search protection is tripped. And then there's also going to be an error message that will show up, the code that will show up right here when the uh, search protector kicks in. And then of course we have the output what right here that is shown. There are three ways to charge this system. First of all, we saw the solar way. So this is where the solar input come in. Then we just plug in right here and the solar charges. Then we have an option to charge this using any of the wall plugs. So you just plug this into the wall and then you plug the other end here and then it starts charging. Finally, we also have an option where you can use this cars DC adapter to charge this. So you plug this into the cars adapter, then you plug this end right here and it starts charging. So those are the three different ways to charge this power station right now. With the wall socket charger, you typically get 200 watt input, which can charge this unit in about seven hours. With the car charger, you can expect to get about 100 watt input and a charge this in fully 12 hours. Solar charging varies by the sun and the panel capacity. You can either charge this using a single 100 watt solar panel, or you can use the splitter that comes with the kit to add a second 100 watt solar panel feed. With the single solar input, I was able to get around 85 watt, which is expected to take over 15 hours to fully charge this power station. However, with the dual solar panel input, the watt is increased to 160 watt, which can charge this power station in about eight hours. You can get a maximum of 240 watt input. These are 100 watt each solar panels, and when folded, they take very little real estate. Unfolding and setup is quite easy and quick. These panels contain the support bracket for tilting support. The panels only have a DC output though. It would have been really nice to have a USB-A and C output here as well so that we could charge our phones and other electronics directly from the panels. The Opace 1200 watt system also contains pass-through charging, which means you can charge this station while it's still using it to charge other devices. Here, we have an electric bike battery that will plug in while the station is charging using the solar panels. When I press on the power output, it started charging the e-bike battery right away. We're charging the power station at 160 watt input from the two solar panels, and this device is concurrently charging my e-bike battery at 85 watt output. Here, we are charging the power station using two solar panels, and the station is charging our electric bike at the same time. With this higher power battery on the e-bike, it is currently drawing about 179 watt, while the solar panels are pushing 153 watt into the station. I still wouldn't recommend using input and output at the same time if you can wait. While we're talking about charging an e-bike, here we have two electric bikes and an electric scooter all plugged in and charging from this single power station at the same time. This power station is sufficiently supplying maximum power to charge each of those electric vehicles at the same time. With this power backup, you can take your e-bike and scooters on your camping trip, knowing that you will always have power supply to charge those electric vehicles. As a content creator, I need to be able to constantly charge my recording equipment. This power station provides 10 ports to plug in different electronics. I can charge my camera batteries, drone, gimbal, and so many other equipment at the same time. I can also easily charge my laptop using this power station at any given time. This station is also great for powering my studio setup, including my lights. Another practical use for this power station is for things like the electric tire inflator. Those devices typically take less than 100 watt, so no issues running other electronics at the same time. Now let's increase the wattage and see how far we can take this. This is a 400 watt Oster blender and this power station can support the blender with no issues at all. It blends perfectly and the source protector didn't kick in. Let's try a corded drill. Whether you have a small project or a larger design, this power station can come in very handy. How about a 800 watt corded lift blower? The Opus 1200 watt system can easily handle that output and you can run your leaf blower for about an hour using this power station. That is remarkable for a station of this size. If you're tired of having to run a long cord to reach different areas of your corded leaf blower, this could be a practical solution. Let's try this 700 watt microwave oven. 
We're going to heat up some water here. The oven is powered on and rotating. We are seeing the wattage numbers go up. Looks like it stabilizes around 1000 watts and our bowl of water is heating up. It says you can do this for a full hour before the battery runs out. Just with about a minute on the timer, we see some steam on our water bowl. This was a success. Let's try a 1000 watt larger microwave oven next. As you can see, it peaks around 1300 watt and this power station is sufficiently handling the power needs of this larger oven. Again, pretty impressive for a power station of this size. I was worried the surge protector was going to trip, but no issues here so far. Here is a 1000 watt space heater. These space heaters are notorious for tripping your electrical breakers. As you can see, it didn't take much time before we started seeing those 1300 watt numbers. Stabilizing around 1000 watt and 96% on the battery remaining, it is expected that you can run this space heater at the max heating output for about an hour. Other use cases for this power station includes powering your TV. Here we have an 88 inch Sony TV and this little power station can support this TV for two hours with 90% battery remaining. You can also power your mini fridge using this station, whether it's a small fridge or a larger one. This station is truly versatile. Let's push the limit of the power station. This is a 1200 watt Vitamix blender. This thing is always hungry for power. As you can see, it went straight up and we're now reaching 1500 watt numbers. Here we are over 1600 watt and this station is still not tripping. It says it can sustain that power for 21 minutes straight. I honestly thought the Vitamix was going to cause a surge protector to come up, but looks like 1600 watt is a sustained power for this power station. All right, let's bring out the big guns here. This is an electric infrared space heater with 1500 watt input. The numbers are rapidly going up, but this is not going to trip the surge alone. It's peaking at around 1200 watt, and we saw earlier with the Vitamix blender that even 1600 watt doesn't flip the surge. How about two space heaters? Okay, as you can see, I'm really trying to test the surge protector here. So with the larger space heater, we're seeing about 1238 watt. The second space heater is plugged in, but not powered on yet. Let's try to power both of them at the same time. The knobs are both set to high, and we can see what the screen shows. Okay, it went fine all the way to 1514 watt, and then it tripped. It gave us an error and the E0001 code, which is an indicator that the surge protector turned on. So based on our testing, we can expect this power station to provide over 1500 watt of sustained pure sine wave, even for an extended period of time. How about charging a Tesla? We found out that this does not work. We keep getting the red charging stop notice and it wouldn't even attempt to charge. I reached out to Opez and they said their 2400 watt system can actually charge our Tesla even just for a few miles. And we hope to test that unit in the future, but this 1200 watt system does not charge the Tesla. Now that we showed you the capabilities of the Opus 1200 watt system, let's talk about the capacity and how long this power station can charge your common devices. Here are some of the common uses and the times. With a full charge on this device, it powers a typical 500 watt blender for two hours, a 550 watt coffee maker for 88 minutes of continuously running, a 900 watt electric grill for 50 minutes, 60 watt TV for two hours, 60 watt mini fridge for 17 hours as the mini fridge doesn't constantly draw power, a typical laptop for about eight charges, CPAP machine for 17 hours, and a typical phone for over 80 charges. Overall, I really like this system. This is a great option for emergency power backup, as well as using it as an everyday power source for many devices. This is great for camping and those situations where you really need power but you don't have access to power. It has over 2,500 charging cycles estimate, and even then you will retain 80% of its capacity. That is because this system uses the LiPo4 batteries, aka lithium iron phosphate battery, which has four times higher lifespan, much safer as they do not overheat or catch fire, and can provide much higher power compared to the traditional lithium ion batteries. Lightweight, versatile, extremely powerful, and practical are just few of the many qualities this Opus power station has. I'm going to end today's review here, but please do let me know 
your thought in the comment section below. I really want to know if you have any use cases for this station and your overall impression of this device. Do you own any other power stations and how does this one compare to those stations? Thank you for watching. I'll be back again with a similar video in the near future. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel and give this video a thumbs up.